Welcome back, guys. I know you love hydroponics, and I know you're into gardening, and these work great, but you get kind of tired sometimes of always having to check your bins. Imagine you could have a flip valve system so that you don't have to constantly do this and see if your bins are getting empty and running low. You can just let a flip valve do the trick. Therefore, the plants don't get stressed. In the heat of July and August, the water levels don't run low and the nutrients don't concentrate and stress our plants out. We just keep them happy and healthy. It helps us save time because we're not always checking all our bins daily, trying to add buckets of water a few gallons at a time so as not to drown our air roots. And we can even go away for a few days and the water levels will cons remain consistent. So there's a lot of advantages to float valves. Let me show you how to make one. Let's get started. Okay guys, here's one of those float valves. Basically what's going on here is we're trying to get our tanks at the same level as the float valve tank in terms of the water going across, right? Let's take a look at what's happening in this float valve system. So basically you have a reservoir on this side and a float valve tank on this side connected by a tubing. In our case, quarter inch irrigation tubing or that flexible clear tubing. And we're going to fill up the reservoir tank with water. Now in most cases, without that float valve, the water would come in into the, the reservoir tank and then start going through this tubing and then this tank would over would flow up to about here with water and then start overflowing, spill over, until the water levels equilibrate. Well, when you put a float valve in, what's going to happen is the water that's at the top of this tank will again flow through here, flow through this tubing, start to come up, fill up this smaller tank, the float valve tank, which is basically our Folgers coffee can that we painted white, and raise this air bladder or this air bottle up enough that it engages with the float valve itself and shuts the valve off right here. So the water will stop once this goes up enough, you know, maybe a 30 degree angle up and then engages here and stops the water flow. So you can remain full in this reservoir tank or pretty full, top it off and uh, as long as as long as long the float valve is engaged upward because of the buoyancy of the water, this is a level that you'll obtain in the float valve. That's perfect though because that now gives you a water level that you can tap into your hydroponic tanks. So if you put another tube here at the bottom out to your hydroponic tanks, let's say you're growing vegetables in this tank, you're, you know, and then you, you, you uh, extend these, the water level is going to be equi equilibrate uh, rated right here with this float valve tank. So the water again will, will transfer here into here. As the water moves here, this thing will drop, reactivate or allow more water back in. The water uh, at the same time will be moving here until it gets up to a level that this cuts off again. As this goes up, because this equilibrates at a high enough level, the valve will close, the reservoir will stop feeding, and these two levels in the in the, uh, the bin for your hydroponics and your float valve tank will be equilibrated. So you can basically continue this process by daisy chaining as many tanks as you need to. I mean, you can keep going if you want, you know what I mean? And you can see all your hydroponic tanks are going to achieve that same level from where your float valve is all the way across, right? That's going to be the water level. So the water will equilibrate to level the float valve. So all you got to do, if you want to achieve uh, water in half your tank or, or, or one third of the tank, this is made, let's pretend this is one third. If you want to go up just a little bit higher and make it a half, keep the water level at half so we have plenty of room for our air roots. But we also have, you know, a good amount of water for the water roots. All we got to do is take a little board and put it under here and push this up a couple inches, right? So, so it's a little higher. The whole thing goes up a little bit and that's going to raise this water level up a little bit. So this is a, how float valves work. The reservoir can stay full. It just won't come out the top and overflow because it shuts off once the, the, the air bladder pushes upward and shuts that valve off and it keeps, when it pushes upward, it stops the water at that level. So again, all you got to do is put a board or a brick or some kind of support underneath it and you can raise it up. Where you can take, remove it, and you can lower it back down, and you can control what's the level in your hydroponic tanks. Hope that makes sense. It's really a neat concept. I just thought I'd kind of try to explain it the best I could here. Okay, guys, it's kind of amazing to me that this works so well. But you see the the reservoir, in, the, the water from the reservoir comes in through here, through that little hole there, down in there, and then when the float valve, you know, sitting in the reservoir goes up, it pushes that little lever there, right onto that hole, and shuts off the water. And what's really amazing to me is that 
There's no neoprene. It's just two pieces of hard plastic. The hard plastic there and the hard plastic around the hole there that come together and create that seal. And I guess the water pressure from below is just enough to keep a good amount of pressure on that connection point so that there's no water leakage. Really, really amazing to me. I thought for sure you would need something spongy or uh, like neoprene to kind of keep the water from some kind of washer or a good seal there. But if these two pieces of hard plastic you know, do the trick, that, that right there around that opening and then right here, this flat part here, that's hard enough to come together and, and shut it off. To me, that's quite amazing. There's a little play, but, but it seems to work. This has been used in many systems and um, reverse osmosis, pond filters, cattle feeders, all sorts of things. These kind of, and there's no flexible neoprene that will wear out. So say, yeah, how, how simple. The water comes up, closes that hole, and then the water from the reservoir can no longer go in. And your little container here won't fill up any further. So it kind of looks like this will be more up at the top. The water will slowly come up and the tilting effect will shut that shut that off, you know? So, so you can kind of imagine it this way and the water coming up and shutting that thing off. Pretty cool. Let's see what the rest of it's made of. Yeah, so this is just like any old bottle. It's just an air bottle. It screws in here. Here's some threads. Um, what kind of bottle to get? Uh, I would say something about this size. I think even a, like if it was more square, it might work better simply because when you put the, the little holes in, um, you get a flat surface to go through rather than a curved surface. But this is fairly good. It worked before on the other one and it's fairly stiff. Uh, just find something that is big enough to have that fit inside and go up and down. All right, just wanted to show you what it looks like up close. Really kind of cool design, huh? Very, very simple, very cool. All right, here's one fourth. Now we want to go just a little bit smaller. So one fourth is actually equal to 1664 fourths. And I tried 1664 fourths already, and it was just too tight with that thick plastic. It worked fine in something like this. See, I tried these different holes. But when you get to the thick plastic, you're going to want to get as close as one fourth as you can. So the closest one is going to probably be in this set is going to be 15. 64s. 15 64s. Can you see that? Even with the 15 64s, I had to I had to basically take this tubing and just kind of bevel it just a little bit with a razor blade, or you could take some sandpaper and do the same so that you can get it in there. This real thick plastic, I'd prefer to hold up better, but it's a it's a, a bear if the hole is too small to get this tubing in. This plastic is actually the 27 gallon totes. That's a very rigid, thick plastic, so what you might want to do is use that 15 64th bit here, even heat it up a little bit, the tubing here, and then push it through. Okay, now for the upper hole, we're going to have to find something that is about the same size as those threads. You have to try it. That might be too small still, but let's give that a go. Oh, that's pretty close. This is a 7 sixteenths. Nice loose fit there. I mean, maybe you could just go a little bit tighter, but it does have a good washer in here, silicone washer down there. Took it in with. So, and then it's got this nut. And the water level should be below that hole because the float valve should lift it up. It should lift up and stop the water flowing in this container before it gets that high. I recommend, I'd recommend try to get this close to the top. Maybe I should even go on higher, but this will work pretty much toward the top of this thing because when the float valve comes up, you know, that's the level that the water's gonna go into your, your hydroponic tank. So if you wanna keep it, this high, you have to have the float valve up here, which the lid's in the way. So even if it's three fourths up, like about here, that's probably about the size of you. So if you want to get a higher in your bins, you almost have to put boards underneath this thing to lift it up even further. So that's why I would say, if you kind of know you're going to want at least that much level in your bins, don't put it down here. So you just have to prop it up with boards to get the same effect. We got this hooked up here. We got excess tubing, I'll cut into that. And I'll just hook that into there. And we should be in business. And then we can always move this back a little more if we need to. You know, I've got my little platform here. It doesn't take much to make a platform. And then, of course, this is going to feed into these two with a little more tubing. So we should, then we should basically have another. What about this one? These two tanks here. 
Francis. The white trash can is going to be the reservoir. One comes out here. I'll cut this tubing, connect those together, slide one into there a little bit, and then I'll put a, a tube way out here, and we'll let we'll put some more tubing and connect into these guys, and we'll go in there and uh, unhook their little kink so that they can become true float valve fed bins. Now one cheap way to do it is just to get these kind of things. Okay, if you don't have a, a T piece like this available, buy some of this light tubing. You can get a reverse osmosis kit that comes with all sorts of adapters. You can shut off valves. So here's an example of another one. You can just push it in with that white tubing. And then you've got a two way, just like that T piece. It's a little really easier because you don't have to force that hard black plastic T piece into the hard rigid tubing. Here's another interesting one. This one actually closes on both sides once you close the valve. So, anyway, I was able to force this in, no problem. I'm trying to get those other pieces on is going to be tricky so what I'm going to do is instead of just going straight into the bins with something like that I'm going to find some kind of flexible tubing hold on 3 16 or 5 16 outer diameter so 5 16 outer 3 16 inner hey guys that's kind of the idea we'll see if it leaks I think it'll be okay I've got to hook up this now the thicker the tubing wall the harder it is to get on the stiffer it's going to be to get on that's why I kind of like that Amazon tubing is a little more flexible than this one was but it worked I got it on just got to Get in there and take off these. See how they're kinked? You just get a bottle cap and drill two holes and then you can kink it and it won't leak. Just that little kink, believe it or not, stops it. Put the holes fairly close together and then it's pretty easy to take them on and off. All right, guys, there's a million ways to make a lid. Here's an old sushi tray. Just cut it up in pieces. You can, uh, it's a little short. That's only negative on that one. So I was thinking about either combining that or just, uh, a piece of wood over or some piece of plastic over it but if you've got something that fits this why not just go with that i mean if you've got some junk laying around this one fits too so here's what you got a piece of wood you come up with something sushi tray like i said this does kind of work but um i'd have to paint it white so i think i'll just put those on there and go with that for now I had this hooked up and I was a little confused because it wasn't dripping too well through here. So what I did, I just went ahead and got the, the bigger reverse osmosis piece. I think this would have worked fine. The thing is I had some dirt in the line over here on this black line. I think it came in this way. And before I had it all hooked up, it was kind of blocking the tube here. You can see I emptied a bunch of it here. And that uh, made me wonder if maybe this drip irrigation tubing was just too small. So I figured, well, these reverse osmosis connectors are just, you know, wider. They're just much bigger inside. There. It's like a little room inside here. And I thought, well, they're probably going to allow more water to transport. You know, we've got it up on a brick, the reservoir. And uh, as the summer goes on, we'll see how it goes. It might raise the reservoir up just a tiny bit more to maximize it, but good. I think it'll work. Snap that lid on and see if we can keep those tanks about half full for the rest of the summer. Let these tomatoes grow. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate you coming back, watching more. And please subscribe. Have a great day. Bye.